repent and be restored, and they certainly wouldn't want that, would they? This is a, a sarcastic comment coming from God. It's irony. He's talking to a people that, that, that had stone hearts against him. That's one interpretation that came out. Otherwise, they might repent and be restored, and they certainly wouldn't want that, would they? And then some other uh, interpreter said, besides, it's too late for that. Wow, what was too late for the children of Israel? We don't want it to be too late for us. So in verse 11, after he says, how long, Lord? He said, until cities are in ruins and unpopulated and houses are uninhabited and the land is ruined and devastated. Hmm, could never happen here. 2021, May 21, 22, 22. Just the other day we were having Bible study and, and Judy brought out the fact that it was May 19. What happened on May 19, folks? How many years ago? Stars fell. Stars fell. God gave some signs. So Isaiah is overwhelmed and he says, how long? And then this terrible, terrible pronouncement of judgment comes. The land is ruined and devastated. And the Lord has sent the people off to a distant place and the very heart of the land is completely abandoned. And listen to this one. If Even if only a tenth of the people remain in the land, it will again be destroyed. That sounds like a pretty complete destruction. And guess what? That prophesied judgment was fulfilled in 701 B.C. when the Assyrians des devastated the land. And it, it already been uh, Isaiah in uh, chapter 1, verses 2 through 20, especially verses 4 through 9. If you look that up, you'll see where God told him it was going to happen. First thing that Isaiah has in his, in his writings, way back in, verse, in chapter 1, that there was going to be a devastation. In other words, why couldn't they change? Why couldn't they turn their hearts toward God so he could prevent that devastation? In Psalm 94, there's another how long. O Lord, how long will the wicked, how long will the wicked celebrate? And if the war, the battle is in the mind, and somebody said, you have this battle going on, it's like having two big German shepherds, and uh, the, the one is really strong, and he keeps bringing, you know, these rah, 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 all, you know, biting at you and everything. And the other German shepherd is pretty mild and meek. How do you get rid of the big, bitey German shepherd? What was the answer? Stop feeding. Stop feeding the big, bitey German shepherd. So if we have a battle of war in our minds, how long will the wicked part of me how long will the wicked part of me celebrate over the part that God wants me to, to be like Jesus? I gotta stop feeding the wicked part. Mm -hmm. I gotta I gotta make some kind of environment where God's will can can prevail. So again in Joshua 18:3, how long are you gonna wait before the possession of the remaining land the Lord, the God of your ancestors, have given you? I wanna know how long I'm going to wait. I don't want to wait anymore. I mean, we've got our wake-up call, right? How many got a wake-up call last year? Yeah. Early writings, here's something. I saw angels of God hasten to the assistance of all who were struggling with their power to resist the evil angels and trying to help themselves by what? Calling upon God with perseverance. And if you read this out of uh, uh, the whole thing about the shaking out of early writings, you'll find they were crying. They were, they, they cried, their faces were pale. But his angels left those who what? Read this out loud with me, please. Who made no effort to help themselves. They just kept feeding the big old German shepherd and did not feed the side that needed the help to be stronger, to be victorious, to take possession of the land. So Ellen White says, I asked the meaning of the shaking I had seen and was shown that it would be caused by the straight testimony called forth by the counsel of the true witness to the Laodiceans. Did the Laodiceans have trouble with their eyes? Did they have trouble with their ears? Did they have trouble with their hearts? Isn't that was some, it's just a most, mostly a repetition of what Isaiah was saying was wrong. Well, guess what? Jesus said this, and I wish you would open your Bibles to John 12. 
Here's what he said in John 12, verse 37. But although he, Jesus, had done so many signs before them, they did not believe in him. What did they not do? They did not believe in him. John 12, verse 37. That verse 38. That the word of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spoke. Lord, who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore, they could not believe, because Isaiah said again, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they should see with their eyes, lest they should understand with their hearts, and turn, so that I should heal them. These things Isaiah said when he saw his glory and spoke of him. Jesus said in verse 44, He who believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And he who sees me sees him who sent me. I've come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. And if anyone hears my word and does not believe, I do not judge him, for I do not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and does not receive my what? My words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. John chapter 12. The true witness to the Laodiceans, believing God's word. And this is what she said. The counsel of the true witness to the Laodiceans. This will have its effect upon the heart of the receiver. And this, I pray, is everyone in the room. And will lead him to exalt the standard and pour forth the straight truth. Some will not bear this straight testimony. They will rise up against it, and this will cause a shaking among God's people. Those people that were in that vision that she saw were pleading with God. So I pray that you and I will take this more seriously, that we will start our pleading with God. Amen. You may have given your life to Jesus. You may have allowed him to possess every aspect of how you live, your finances, your work, your prayer life, your friends and family. And this is like the work of sanctification. It is a lifetime task. But are you enjoying or experiencing everything Jesus has made possible for you? Are you still feeling guilty and powerless? Jesus came to bring forgiveness, new life, and the power of the Holy Spirit to you. Make sure that you take possession of what is already yours today. Amen. God says in effect to his people, don't you realize I've given all of this to you? What are you waiting for? Our closing hymn is number 207. It may be at morn. And uh, I ask you, invite you all to stand as we sing number 207. You're going to see a theme in here.
softly the end of that song again. Our Father, it's our heart where the battlefield is. It's where Armageddon is being fought. It's where we can say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And then we bring in stuff that doesn't have anything to do with serving you. Our house, our temple, between our two parts of our head, we call it a temple. May I be part of your recovery, your reformation team, Lord. May my body be part of your temple. May, may you be able to claim every part of us, Lord, as a church body. Not, every, not just every member, but Lord, in our hearts, we have places you have longed to cleanse. There's enemies that have taken control of our inheritance. And you have said you would dry them out little by little, and today is the day we want to see our inheritance belong to us completely. If, if you have something, dear friends, if there's a place that only you and Jesus know about and only you and Jesus need to know about it, that place, Jesus can change it. I have a witness that he is powerful to change even secret places in your heart. If you want Jesus to change something in your heart, would you do me a favor? Just raise your hand. No, all eyes are closed. I'm not even looking. Raise your hand to the living God. The God who changes things because he changes not. Heavenly Father, you see our hands, you see our hearts, and you see what we need. You can put your hand down. May that change that only you can do be done for us. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let's sing that chorus, O oh Lord. Thank you. 